Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing Illustrative Math, Grade 8, Unit 2, Lesson Number 11. Okay, our first problem here. For each pair of points, find the slope of the line that passes through both points. If you get stuck, try plotting the points on graph paper and draw the line through them with a ruler. Okay, our first set of points... A goes through 1, 1, which is here, and 7, 5, which is here. So slope is rise over run. We go up 1, woo, come back, come back, come back. We go up one, two, three, four, and we go over one, two, three, four, five, six. So our slope is four over six, which is two thirds. Look, we also go up one, two, and over one, two, three. So slope of two thirds. Okay, our next one goes through 1, 1 and 5, 7. Okay, now we have a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and a run of one, two, three, four. So this one, six over four, which is three halves. Okay, our next one goes through the point two, five, two, five, and negative one, two, negative one, two. Okay, so now we've got a rise of one, two, three, and a run of one, two, three. Three thirds, which is one. Slope of one. Okay, last one here. We go through two, five. Same point as before, and negative seven. Negative four. Let's see how well I can draw this one. Ooh. What do we notice now? One rise of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Run of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Nine ninths is also just one. Slope of one. Okay, other way to look at these, I'm going to do just one of them. A different way. Slope, we remember, is the rise over the run the change in y over the change in x those little triangles deltas they mean change for this one the change in y's well we went from one to five one to five is four and our x's went from one to seven Change in x from 1 to 7 was 6. Ooh, that's the same thing we had here. So 4, 6, that's 2 thirds. So I did some of these with the graph, and I showed you how to do it without the graph. Okay, line L is shown on the coordinate plane. 
What are the coordinates of point B and D? Well, here's B. Is the point four zero, right? D is the point eight ten. Is the point sixteen, comma twenty on line L? Sixteen twenty. Well, how are we going to figure that out? This graph doesn't go to sixteen twenty. That's somewhere up over here. How can we figure that out? Well, we do go through the point four five. We go through the point eight ten. So are we going to go through others? Well, we know looking at the slope of this, we rise five for every four that we go forward. We rise five for every four we go forward. So if we're at 810, if we go forward four more, we'll rise five again that would be the point 12 15 go four more forward we will go five more up that is 16 20. how about 2024 well from 16 if we go forward four more that would be 20. But if we go forward four, we go up five. If we go forward four, we go up five. So if we're at 20, we would be at 25. No, because at 20, at an X value of 20, we're at a Y value of 25. Was the point 80? 100 on the line. Ooh, now that's getting kind of big. I don't want to keep going over and over again all the times to get from 20 to 100, but we know with the point 810 and the point 45, we know our slope is 5 over 4. We also know that we go through the point 8, 10. If we did 10 divided by 8, ooh, those are equivalent fractions. What if we did 16, 20? Those are equivalent fractions. What about are those equivalent fractions? Well, let's look at this one. What if we multiply the numerator by 10? That gives us 100. Multiply the denominator by 10. That gives us 80. So yes, that point has to be on the line. Write a rule that would allow you to test whether x comma y is on the line. Well, using the slope like this, how can we do that? Our y value is always 5 fourths the x value. If 
x is 4, what's 5 fourths times 4? Well, that's 5. Ooh, that point's on the line. What if our x value is 8? Well, 8 times 5 fourths, that's 10. So that's our rule, that if we know any point, we can test it using this rule. Okay, consider the graphed line. My uses triangle A and says the slope of this line is 6 over 4. Well, let's check that. Height of this triangle is 6 over 4. So, yes, I would agree with that. Now, let's check this one. Elena uses triangle B, the smaller triangle, and says the slope is 1.5. Looks like that's about 1.5, and we go over 1. So, rise of 1.5 over 1. This one has a rise of 6 over 4. 6 over 4 would simplify to 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. 1 1.5, also 1 and a half. My head's covering stuff. Say, so, hey, Mr. Poskin, could you kindly remove your head? Okay, do you agree with either of them? Yes, they both of these slopes give us both slopes are three over two. I like to always leave slope as a fraction. I don't care if it's a improper top-heavy fraction, because if I'm looking at slope, knowing that I have a rise of three and a run of two, up three over two. Fractions are your friends. A rectangle has a length six and a height four. Which of these would tell you that quadrilateral ABCD is not similar to this? So we have a rectangle with a length of 6 and a height of 4. We want to know if this different quadrilateral ABCD is definitely not similar. So AB is congruent to BC. So we want it to be a rectangle. So if AB is congruent to BC, if those are the same, well, that wouldn't be similar. That is definitely not similar. Because for these two to be the same length, we wouldn't have a length of 6 and a height of 4. That's not going to work because this is saying that those are the same dimension. The measurement of angle ABC is 105 degrees. Well, if we have an angle that's 105... We know it is not a rectangle. How about the length of AB is 8? Well, if this has a length of 6 and a height of 4, we've got no dimensions that are 8. We 
We've got no dimension that's 8. What about this one, BC? Hey, that's the same thing. We have no dimension that is 8 if we have a length of 6 and a height of 4. BC is double AB. BC is 2 times AB. Well, is that going to work? Well, if we have a length of 6 and a height of 4, we have no side that is double one of the others because 6 is not double 4. Now, what's next? 2AB equals 3BC. So what if AB was 4 and BC was 6? 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 6 is 18. That doesn't work. But what if AB was 6 and BC was 4? 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. So this one, they could be similar. This doesn't tell us anything about the angles, but... That is the only one that can be similar. Wait a minute. I did this as congruent, not similar. That's the only one that can be congruent. Congruent figures are also similar. So that's, that could be, we want definitely not similar. If there's a dimension that's eight, that could be similar. Go away, stupid writing about when I did this wrong. Those two can be similar. BC equals 2 times AB. If this is 4 and this is 6, we are not going to be similar if that's double. We're not going to be similar if there's an angle. Okay, so the choices for this that work are C, D, and F. And isn't it nice to know that you're not the only one who makes mistakes Math teachers do it too. C, D, and F. Congruent and similar are not the same thing. I shouldn't be recording videos this early in the morning. Okay, this has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. See you next time.